Hi! I'm Laura, and I want to welcome you to Adventures in Creating, the place where I take you on an adventure to create something hopefully awesome. Today, as we are starting the big holiday celebration seasonal time, we are going to be making eggnog. And not just any eggnog, but aged eggnog. Quick caveat, this is not child friendly. It does have alcohol in it, just as a little heads up. But this is the type of eggnog to get started on making now. But Laura, Christmas is not until the end of the month or whatever holiday you are celebrating. I know, but trust me, it is worth every moment to wait and age this so you get the full richness of the flavor. This is a special drink that you can bring out. It will please all of your adult friends. It is great, well worth it. Creamy, rich, decadent, melts in your mouth with delightful flavors of the holiday. <laughs> Trust me when I say you won't want to miss out on this. Very simple recipe. I will be showing you a sugared version. However, at the end of the video, I'll be tasting, hopefully with you, also a sugar-free version and tell you how you can make that for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started as we make our fabulous eggnog that is aged perfectly for the season. Here you can see the ingredients we are going to need to make our delightful eggnog. You will need eggs. You'll need a lot of them, a whole dozen. You will also need some liquors or alcohols. I am going to be using rum, brandy, and bourbon. There is, of course, I'm not brand specific, so you can use whichever brands you prefer. You'll need a little bit of salt. You'll need some sugar, some milk, and some heavy cream, and you'll also need nutmeg. Now I am using whole nutmegs, which I'll show you better later. And as a result, I need to basically grind that a little bit or shave some of it off. If you have pre-powdered nutmeg, then you will not need the zester. But otherwise you'll need a zester or something to grind your nutmeg a little bit. You're also gonna need a whisk, a spatula to scrape out things, some measuring spoons, a measuring cup, and both dry and liquid. You're also gonna need a container to store this in. You can use several smaller containers or a larger one, glass jars, something like a large pickle jar. Awesome, great way to go. I'm using an old alcohol bottle because why not? You'll also need a couple bowls and a funnel to go with your ingredients. So without further ado, let's get started. We are going to start with our eggs. Now we are going to want 12 eggs separated. So that is a whole dozen. Now I didn't mention needing another container, but I'm going to say it now. You will need something to store the egg whites in because we are just keeping the egg yolks. Why would you save the egg whites? Well, reason being is because you can use them for all sorts of things. So an egg white you could use, quite frankly, straight up the bat to make egg white either omelets or scrambled eggs or something uh, that is strictly an eggy type thing. Otherwise, you can, of course, end up using them for something like a meringue or you could use them for an angel food cake. Lots of options and good reasons to save the egg whites and that is just barely scratching the surface of what you can do with them. So I recommend hanging on to them. So now, right now, I am separating my egg yolks and my whites. Now there's lots of different ways that this can be done, including using little devices that just separate them right away. I find the easiest way is I just do this by hand. And this has just worked for me over the years. I used to use some of those devices and they seemed like more work than this. So basically you crack the egg out, you slowly let some of the white gooey part come out and you just roll the yolk gently in your fingers and beautiful yolk, toss it in. You can see I already have uh, three yolks. There we go, <laughs> it's a little hard to see at first. And I am saving all the whites. So I'm gonna continue to do this and get all of my 12 egg yolks in there. And then I will meet you back up. 
As you can see, I've separated the egg whites, which I am setting those aside because I will use them in something else later on. And I'm trying to tilt so I don't spill though. <laughs> you can see I have my egg yolks here in the bowl. We're going to be whisking those with our sugar and our nutmeg. Now nutmeg, if you've never seen whole nutmegs, basically they are these tiny little balls here. <laughs> um, and they, they look a little, they've got sort of stripes inside. Basically the best way to use them then is to grate them. And I like them whole because they take a lot longer to go bad. Now you need about a good teaspoon of nutmeg in here. So I am going to be grating this, zesting it, just going on until I get what looks close to a teaspoon. Of course, you can always grate this right into a separate bowl or container and then measure it out to make sure you're being exact. For me, I really like the flavor of nutmeg, so I just tend to go a little bit on the heavy side. And that's just my own personal preference. If you don't care for nutmeg as much, you can always go much lighter and just do half a teaspoon, but I think it brings a great um, nuttiness. I know that sounds repetitive, but a, a great spicy flavor to this and not spicy hot, but spicy as in full of spices, full of flavors, brings in the warmth of the season and all of that good stuff. So now after zesting this just a little bit and I'm going to shake off all the extra. To me, this looks a lot like about a teaspoon and I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there I have it right on top. Now, as far as the sugar, we're going to actually use a whole pound of it, which I know it's a lot, but we are not making a single serving here. There's also 12 eggs in here. So don't get all hung up on that heavy amount. Now, we need a pound of it. I set this on my scale. That's the easiest way for me to measure this out. And I'm going to just pour this right in until I get to a pound, which all right, now I'm at three quarters, almost there. And voila, we have a pound. And I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. I'll see if I can move the camera so you can see a little bit better. There, just over a pound of sugar mixed in, or not mixed in yet, but <laughs> into our bowl. Setting my scale aside, and I'm going to take my whisk, and I'm just going to try and get this to come together nicely. So I'm, it's gonna be a little weird at first because you have all of that sugar, but the egg yolks are great. They kind of bind everything together. So they're sort of like a magical glue of the food community. But basically I'm just going to be making this so that they combine. I'm gonna whisk and whisk and whisk. And we have this beautiful color here. It's coming together full of sugar and nutmeg goodiness. Yay! <laughs> And this is another great time to use your own creativity. If instead you would rather some clove flavoring in there, add some cloves in, add a little bit of cinnamon. This is a, you don't have to do strictly the nutmeg, but that's just what I'm gonna be doing in mine, sticking pretty close to the recipe that I am using. And I'm just gonna whisk this a little bit longer until it's very smooth. And we'll move on to the next stage. Now I've stirred our eggs. They are very nice. You can see they drip off just beautifully. The eggs are whisked together. They are ready to go. I'm gonna set them aside and move on to our other liquid ingredients. Now we are going to be mixing in our dairy and our alcohol and our salt. There will be a lot of liquids going in here. So I have a big bowl. I'm gonna start with my heavy cream. We are actually putting in, and I know it's a lot, we're gonna do four cups. You could of course mix this up with about two cups of heavy cream and two cups of half and half if you would rather, but we are going to be using four cups of a creamy substance. <laughs> Trust me, it's okay. It, I know it sounds, again, like a lot, but this is for the complete recipe. This is not just a partial this is not a single serving. <laughs> so we have two cups in our bowl. Now I'm going to be adding in another two cups, which I need to move my measuring cup so you can see better. All right, here we have our next two cups. You can see, voila, right on in. Now we're going to add in two cups of milk. I'm going to be using whole milk. And part of that is 
not only do I think whole milk tastes better because of the fat, fat equals really good flavor, but I also feel like there would be no reason to compromise on this. We've already put in four cups of heavy cream. Using skim milk now just doesn't really make sense. Now we move on to our alcohols. I am using dark rum. That is my first one I'm putting in. And we will be doing a cup of each alcohol. And honestly, I'm gonna be a little heavy on it because I want this eggnog to be delightful. Cup right into our, our dairy. There was our rum. Alcohol number one, out of the way. Woohoo! Next, I will be taking brandy. I do like brandy quite a bit. Um, <laughs> lately, this has become a the drink of choice that I prefer. But things happen, things change. Our tastes change over time. And again, I'm going to do a heavy cup of this. And that right on into our dairy. Yay! <laughs> And last but not least, we're going to take our bourbon whiskey. I am using Kentucky style. You could use other kinds. I have tried the Canadian style, and I think that also tastes quite delightful. Highly recommend using that. And we want another cup of this, so I am going to go again a heavy cup of this. Pouring that right on in because a little extra alcohol around the holidays, that's okay. <laughs> and ta-da! we have our next set, our next part of alcohol. Woo, right on in. All right, we have a lot of liquid and I'm gonna lift the camera so you can see. This bowl is pretty darn full. Now, we're just going to also mix in with this section here, our salt. You don't need a lot and I think I've mentioned this in some of my other videos. Reason we use the salt is because the salt brings out the flavor it uh, enlivens what is happening with the other food for our taste buds. So we just need about a quarter teaspoon and put that right into our milk and alcohol mixture. Now we are going to need to mix this all up and we want the salt in particular to be absorbed. So what I'm going to do, I'm taking my spatula and I'm going to just stir it this way. You could of course use a whisk, that would be fine, no harm in that. I'm just going to mix this here. It will come together pretty nicely and pretty quickly. Now we need to move on to our next step. Now we have our milk, cream, and booze along with our eggs and sugar. They are ready to mix together. So I'm gonna actually just pull my spatula out a while and <laughs> just set that to the side. Now we are going to need to mix this into here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to start eating it right on in, whisking it on in. And I'm just gonna keep the milk and booze moving because that's an easier way to mix it in. Yay! And this, it's so, such a delightful eggnog recipe. I prefer this over a lot of them. And I'm gonna actually scrape out what's left in my egg bowl and make sure we get all that goodness into our mixture. We don't wanna miss out on any of this. The flavors end up being so complex and just, mm, they remind me of the season. And there we go, getting that all cleaned out. And I will just now continue to whisk because I want this all to be combined. And essentially, here we go, this way you can see, here I am just whisking in all these good ingredients. So in here we have eggs, sugar, nutmeg, heavy cream, milk, rum, brandy, bourbon, and salt. All sorts of delightful things we all want to be tasting. Now this, uh, at this point, this to me feels pretty well mixed. I'm just gonna keep going a little bit longer, but it's almost there. We are going to need to put it into our container. Now what container works best? Well, you could of course use 
some mason jars, nothing wrong with that. Or as I mentioned, something like one of those giant pickle jars. If you have one of those, those are great for storing this because you want it to be in a container where it's going to be safe. I have here an empty uh, bottle of alcohol. So I will be putting it in there and putting the lid on. You could of course recycle some of your other bottles. The only thing I would caution you with some of these is some of them are sealed with corks instead of screw on top. So you just need to make sure the cork's not gonna degrade and just also that you're gonna have a way to seal it. It's just because sometimes you can, I'm talking too much. So we are going to move on to our other bottle here and that to me feels mixed so how we are going to do this i'm trying to think how i can do this in a way you can see but i will move the bottle here and i am going to pour very carefully into my funnel i don't want to miss out any of this and as you can see my bottle is filling up all this good stuff Yay. And this is actually going to end up being more than what my bottle can hold. So I will grab another bottle to have. And you can see I grabbed another bottle quick and I'm going to dump some more of our lovely mixture right on in here. Excellent, excellent. So there that is mixed in. So basically at this point now, what I'm going to do is I'll put the lids on these containers and I'm gonna store them in the refrigerator and not taste them for at least two weeks. So this is perfect if you make say the first week of December or even in November if you get your hands on the ingredients sooner, as soon as you can and let it sit until Christmas and uh, that is a great time or even New Year's break it out this is the best stuff totally blows store-bought eggnog out of the water admittedly though this is not safe for children it has alcohol in it make sure you are of legal drinking age before you engage in drinking with this did you go on an adventure did you have fun did you make this fantastic eggnog Oh, mine has been sitting in my fridge for maybe a little bit more than a month. So about four or five weeks, something like that. I am so excited to crack this open and try it with you. Mm, it's, oh, it's not vodka, but <laughs> it smells so delightful. And I'm just going to pour a little bit in. Oh, yes. Now this is the sugared version, the one that I made with you. Bottoms up. Oh, the flavors have all mellowed together. So that is just a refreshing and yet warming drink at the same time. Mm. I can knock back a few of these. <laughs> I'm going to open up now my sugar free version. So what I did is I made a smaller batch that was sugar free. I was really excited to try that because honestly, I try to watch my sugars just to make sure I don't have too much in my system. So when I do have some, it's not a big deal. So what I did was instead of the sugar, I used xylitol. There's lots of sugar substitutes out there that are great options. I use xylitol. That's something that I've been baking with recently that has given me great results. And I picked this up at my local Walmart. So it is readily accessible to people. There are other substitutes such as monk fruit extract, uh, whether that's dried or liquid. That one I have yet to experiment with. I have some in my cupboard. I'm looking forward to doing that. So stay tuned. There might be some other exciting recipes to come. And if you are comfortable with a different sugar substitute, by all means, give that a try, whether you're using Stevia or Splenda or one of the other ones out there on the market because there are so many of them. So we're gonna give this a little taste test. Otherwise, same recipe, but sugar-free in so. This is a little bit safer, especially if you are diabetic or have, have any sort of you know, sugar sensitivities that you have to watch. So sugar-free aged eggnog. Let me see if it's just as delightful. That is 
very good. I will say I feel as though the alcohol flavor is coming through a little bit stronger on the sugar-free version than on the other one. But otherwise, to me, that's just as good. So we have made a batch, a full batch of sugared eggnog, adult eggnog. Don't forget that. <laughs> it is delightful. I highly recommend that. Nice, creamy, rich. It reminds me of sitting in front of a fire, like relaxing with someone you love and just having peace, being at peace, which is a great thing to remember this time of the year anyways. Also, we have our sugar-free version, which to me had a little bit more kick, and I imagine that's because the sugars didn't dissolve quite the same, but both totally worth enjoying. So get started making this because you're going to want this to rest for about a month. So in other words, if you make it today or tomorrow or the next day, put it in the fridge, let it sit, shake it up occasionally because sometimes the dry ingredients do settle a little bit in it and bring it out and taste it on Christmas, Christmas Eve, if you're celebrating Yuletide, if you're celebrating a different holiday, whatever it is, crack it open on New Year's. This is the way to go. Get started making it and enjoy. I will be seeing you next week, same time, same place for another fantastic holiday adventure. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.